Hi everyone, I'm Jenny from Canada is the Lake Education. Today I'd like to talk about the topic about poetic and pictorial splendor. I'm not the expert of this topic, but I'd like to share some of my thoughts with you. And I'm a, a little bit nervous because it's the first time I recorded the lecture about Chinese literature in English. So, I, I will begin with the story of the players of fish, and then I divide the topic into seven parts and then ended with the story of butterfly. Two stories are all from Zhuangzi. First, let's begin our topic with this very famous story about players of fish. And Zhuangzi, um, he's from fourth century before Christ. So one day he strolled along a river. He, he said to his friend Huizi, oh, see how the fish come out and dart around where they please. That's what fish really enjoy. His company Huizi answers, you are not fish. How do you know what fish enjoy? So Jones replies, you are not I. So how do you know? I don't know what fish enjoy. So how about you think about that? So in the description at the end of the painting, so here is a painting, a hand scroll from Zhou Dongqing. He's active late 13th century. So from Song to Yuan dynasty. And in the inscription at the end of the painting, the artist, artist has written four lines, yeah, written. Not being fresh, how do we know their happiness? But we may express our feelings in our painting in order to probe the subtleties of the ordinary, we must describe the indescribable. So he said, we may express our feelings in our painting, even though we are not being fish and we don't know their happiness, yes? but we may express our feelings into painting. Here, we come to our first part. That's almost the one secret in Chinese literature, ancient literature. So since ancient time, it has been said the poetry and painting share the same origin, which is embodied in there is painting in poetry, just as there is poetry in painting. This is a very famous quote from Su Dongpo in Song Dynasty. And he said of Wang Wei, the great Tang poet and painter, there is poetry in his painting and painting in his poetry. So in China, poetry and painting have nearly inseparable and have been related to each other in variety of ways. The Chinese poet and painter might well be one and the same person. So Su Dongpo and Wang Wei being both the two examples, two supreme examples of artist writers. Um, these are the quotes to help us to understand the silent poetry and the invisible painting. The silent poetry 
is painting. The invisible painting is poem. So the writings of a famous poet are paintings without form, and a famous painter's work is a poem without words. So that's the relation of Chinese ancient time, the poem and the painting are inseparable. Um, this is from Wang Wei's poem, and uh, actually it's a word puzzle. Let's do it together to solve this puzzle together. So listen carefully. View from far away, the mountains have colors. Listen closely, water has no sound. Flowers are still blossom, even though the spring has gone. And birds are not startled, even though people come by. So what's that? Why? So this word puzzle, the poem, the answer is it's a painting. So we will introduce another one ways poem to understand there's a poetry in his painting and a painting in his poetry this poem called autumn twilight in the mountains in the empty mountains after the new rain the evening is cool, soon it will be autumn. The bright moon shines between the pine tree. The crystal stream flows over the pebbles. Girls coming home from washing in the river rustle through the bamboo grove. Lotus leaves dance behind the fisherman's boat. The perfumes of spring have vanished, but my guests will long remember them. In this poem, the poem uses six lines to write about the scene on autumn evening. And the arrangement is the same as that in painting scroll. Washer woman and fish boats come into sight. And then far away, there is a bright moon shining between pines, rocks, and clear streams. So there's a ring and a mountain in the dusk, and there's moon and pine trees, and a moon and a crystal stream, and the girls coming home after washing, and the fishermen. All these fall within a big picture, characterized by empty mountains, fresh rain, and evening air. Very beautiful picture. It's a poem, but it's also a painting. There is a painting in this poem. So this is a, a Chinese painting. Chinese painting uniquely combining the three perfections, calligraphy, painting and poetry to present a harmonious whole. The three perfections is a gathering of poets, calligraphies and paintings to create an artwork in ancient China. So we will see in the painting this poem. And this is from Ming Dynasty, Shenzhou, and its poetic feeling of fallen flowers it from its title we can see that in this picture there is a poem this is my first part and welcome back <laughs>